Welcome back guys. In this series of videos, we'll be talking about the protein synthesis process and different stages of protein synthesis are also called as the translation. Now translation is the most important part and also the last part of the central dogma of biology which is connecting everything. Because you know the central dogma of biology suggests us we have DNA double stranded which carries every information. That information is passed on to mRNA which are the messenger of that DNA and then this mRNA will be translated into proteins because ultimately whatever thing we are seeing, whatever thing we are observing which are functional are obviously proteins, right? So ultimately we need to produce protein even for the replication of DNA, even for the transcription of the DNA into mRNA we require proteins. Whatever things we are talking, even in the protein synthesis process we require other proteins to do the job. So in everything we are seeing of a particular complicated organism like us, like eukaryotes or also in prokaryotes, proteins are the most important point. Now in this video, in series of videos we will be talking about the different stages of protein synthesis. Now for our convenience and uh, good understanding, we break down this journey in three different stages, actually four videos. First video is about the basic overview of the protein synthesis or translation. Second is the initiation stage of protein synthesis because the whole process of protein synthesis can be divided into three different sections. One is the initiation phase, second is the elongation phase and third one is the termination phase. So three stages are there and they are sequential. Obviously initiation at the first, then elongation, then termination, right? So now let's talk about the protein synthesis stages one after another and, and, and very in this first video we'll be talking about the basic overview of protein synthesis. Now before these three important stages also we need another important stage and that is called the charging of tRNA which I haven't mentioned here. So it's a tRNA charging. This is an important phase that are also present. Okay, so these are the four stages. Now in this video we are talking about the overview of the protein synthesis. For the protein synthesis to occur in prokaryote as well as in eukaryotes. Both are kind of have remarkable similarities, right? So we'll be talking here about the prokaryotic protein synthesis, though the eukaryotic protein synthesis is far more complicated than prokaryotes, but the stages and uh, the enzymes involved kind of similar. They have different names, but they kind of similar in nature. So for understanding protein synthesis, we need to know what are the materials we have and what we need to produce. So the materials we have uh, during the protein synthesis at the beginning, we have an mRNA which carries all the codons which will be ultimately translated into proteins because each codon produces one amino acid. So single codon codes for one particular type of amino acid. So we have codons in mRNA, so we require mRNA. Now the second thing that we require here is tRNA or transfer RNA which will bind with amino acid carrier. So they will carry amino acid sequence. So that is the job of transfer RNA or tRNA. Now what is the third thing that we require here is the machinery which will catalyze the attachment of one and another amino acid with each other together. And that third thing here is ribosome. And ribosome is for catalysis of this whole reaction. Now remember in each cases like in lipids, I mean in fat molecules, the units are fatty acids. Fatty acids are joined together, they will produce fat or lipid molecules. In nucleotide like DNA or RNA, there are nucleotides as uh, the single unit which will be joined to get DNA or RNA. Now in case of proteins, the single unit are amino acids. So amino acids will be joined together to make proteins. And we require all these different kinds of molecules like mRNA, tRNA and ribosome at the core of this protein synthesis pathway. Alongside what else we require is the unit that I have told you that is the amino acids because 
Amino acids are the things which are added with each other to bring us the protein structure, right? So amino acids are the raw materials there. Amino acids are the raw materials for this protein synthesis. But except for these raw materials, we require certain accessory proteins which help this process to organize properly and to work properly. Especially which helps in the organization of all these three things, three molecules like mRNA, tRNA and ribosome to cross talk with each other and finally get us what we need. And those materials are termed as different types of factors. They are termed as the protein synthesis factors or translation factors. So those translation factors are of different type. For example, certain trans, I mean, let me write it here once. These are called as uh, the translation factors. And the factors can be divided differently. For example, there are certain factors specific for the initiation. They are termed as initiation factor or IF. There are factors for elongation termed as EF or elongation factors and they are also for termination. They are termed as release factor or RF. So these are the different factors that are also required for the protein synthesis to occur properly. So as we know the raw materials and are the other accessory proteins for the protein synthesis, now let's look at uh, the overview and basic overview of how this protein synthesis will work. Now the idea for protein synthesis is not very difficult, it's very very easy actually. Even it's more easier to understand the DNA replication. Protein synthesis is far more easy, believe me. And let's say here at the very beginning what we have, we have an mRNA. Let's say this is the mRNA. And what we else require? We require the ribosome at the core. So we have this ribosome subunits. Remember the large subunit of ribosome and the small subunit of ribosome. Two different subunit, large subunit and small subunit. And in ribosome, if you look at the structure of ribosome, they have three different, three different regions in ribosome. Three different sites in ribosome. E, P and A. E site, P site and A site. E site means exit site, P site means peptide bond forming site, A is another amino acyl tRNA addition site. So we'll be talking about them later in details but the thing is an ribosome, an mRNA and what else we require? We require a tRNA and here comes let's say the tRNA with three anticodons and with one amino acid at, added to that tRNA. So let's say this is the structure that we need to form for any kind of translation or protein synthesis. Addition of both subunits of ribosome large and small. Then what we require an mRNA which contains the code, codon, 3 nucleotide codon. Let's say here is the 3 nucleotide codon this blue color. And complementary with that codon we have a tRNA anticodon. So if I draw the tRNA here Let's say this is the tRNA and we draw it like this and it is added with an amino acid. So this is a, let me write tRNA which is remember here added, right, with anticodon here, right. And tRNA as the anticodons are complementary with this codon, they will engage itself with the mRNA codon, with the help of anticodon. And it has a amino acid added there, right. Now remember, there are 20 different types of important amino acids that we require in our body, right. And there are specific tRNA which carry a specific amino acid. So there are 20 different types of tRNA found in our body which are made in such a way to carry 20 different amino acids. So they are specific in amino acid binding. Now let's talk about the process. So here all the subunits arrange themselves with the help and mRNA is in between and then let's say the first tRNA comes in. Now the first stage I have told you every time when I talk about these physiological processes 
that in any process like DNA replication, transcription, or translation, the initiation step is very, very important, probably the most important stage of all. And it takes some more time, some more process complication to occur. At the very beginning, the first tRNA with amino acid that will bring itself and add it will be slightly different. That amino acid that will bring will not be the normal 20 type of amino acid. It is slightly chemically modified. We know methionine is a type of amino acid. We all know that methionine is a type of amino acid. But this methionine is modified to f met or formylated methionine. So methionine is now formylated. So formyl group is added with the methionine and that acts as the first amino acid to be brought by the first tRNA. And they will bring it and bind it to the P site at the very beginning. So they will be attached here, right? And there are other accessory factors role. I will be not. I will be talking about them later in details. Now they are bound with the. So now the next amino acid will come in, and next amino acid carrier tRNA will come in. So the next tRNA which will come in this place. Let's say this one, this blue color one. This is the next tRNA. It is having the amino acid, a different kind of, let's say, arginine as an amino acid, right? So this is the normal type of amino acid carrier. So they will come and sit on to this A with another amino acid there. So now, once P and A, both sides are occupied. After that, due to the help of certain elongation factors, what ribosome actually does, ribosome sh shifts one unit of codon. Now one unit of codon means three nucleotide sequence which consists of one codon, right? So three nucleotide sequence will be, so this, this ribosome will slide along three nucleotide sequence here. So slide a, along one codon unit here from the 5 prime to the 3 prime direction through the mRNA. So again for the protein synthesis also the directionality is 5 prime to 3 prime. Why? Because actually in reality protein synthesis occurs simultaneously with the transcription of RNA. So if there is a DNA and transcription is going on, let's say this is the DNA somewhere and the transcription is going on, let's say that this is the mRNA that is being generated from 5 prime towards 3 prime, ribosomes will eventually sit and start producing protein to start translating that mRNA. So this is the reality. There is no time to first completely synthesize the mRNA, then start translation. No, it will take a lot of time. That's why the process are kind of simultaneous. So now, once the second amino acid in A position place, ribosome will move along one nucleotide sequence. And during this process, what happens before that, this amino acid that was present there by the first tRNA will be transferred and added with the next amino acid. So the, this, this first formylated methionine carrier tRNA will transfer this amino acid and attach this amino acid with this newly come or newcomer amino acid sequence containing tRNA. So now it is being released. This reaction of adding one amino acid with another is catalyzed by the enzyme peptidyl transferase and the formation of bonds between two amino acids there will be termed as peptide bond formation and it is catalyzed by the enzyme peptidyl transferase and that enzyme activity is itself provided by the large subunit of ribosome right so once it is done now what happens the first tRNA is now free second one have two amino acids now this ribosome will slide along one codon unit, means three nucleotide sliding. And then what happens if it slides three nucleotides there? Try to imagine now, if it slides three nucleotides or one codon, that means what happens? This first tRNA will now in the, in, will be in the place of E site, right? So we, whatever it is present in P site will now be in E site. And the second one, which is which was the A site, will now be the in the P side, right? So now what happens, just think about sliding one window. That means this red one will be in E and the blue one will be in P. So A will become free again. And a new amino acid carrier tRNA will come and sit onto this A 
and same thing will occur in that case they will transfer both the amino acid sequence two amino acid sequence from the p site to the newcomer so there will be three amino acid added they gain, then again one codon shift and again same thing will occur and continuously the ribosome will slide along it will move through this mrna from 5 prime to 3 prime right so that's how the process will work and this process will work until and unless they reach a stop codon and remember i forgot to mention at the very beginning the start of this process will start from the start codon which is all the time aug in prokaryotes so that is the start codon so the anti codon at the very beginning the fmat anti codon here will be the opposite of that so it will definitely be u a c right so it begins from start codon and it will continue this process until they reach a stop codon which is remember three different stop codons are there u a a u g a and u a g so whatever stop codon they reach at the very end then all this structures ribosomal subunits along with the tr and mrna will be dissociated and they will release so this whole process of of adding a trna the first trna to the start codon and moving it until and unless they reach the stop codon this complete process is termed as one ribosome cycle they are termed as remember ribosome cycle right and the idea was actually not only they synthesize this protein simultaneously with the transcription but also another important thing is that they translate uh, mrna with multiple copies of ribosomes at the same time because remember they need to produce a lot of proteins because let's say from the start codon to the stop codon there is uh, one particular protein will be produced right let's say 200 amino acids they will produce only one protein so if one ribosome at a time goes that through that process it will take a long time to produce many amount of proteins so produce multiple numbers of protein in very small amount of time what they need to do they recruit multiple ribosomes multiple ribosomes and they start adding uh, amino acids and start producing the same protein again and again at the same time simultaneously so that is called the polyribosome because many ribosomes are added to produce proteins right so this in a sense is the overview of protein synthesis and i hope that's helpful now once you know this process then from the next video onwards we will be talking about the trna charging initiation elongation and termination of protein synthesis process so stay tuned and complete watch this video in the next thank you